First this, Boris Johnson blaming the Church of England for Britain's obesity crisis. I mean, that does sound like a line out of Viz, doesn't it? Saying its failure to provide spiritual sustenance has led people to gorge themselves. He's critical. He's criticised religious leaders, including Archbishop Justin Welby. I think he's got bigger problems at the moment for focusing on slavery reparations rather than addressing people's spiritual needs. Johnson also noted that when he was younger, it was very rare to see a, quote, fatso in the class. Now they're all fatsos. Only Boris would go there, right? His comments come as a study has found forcing cafes and restaurants to put calorie labels on their menus hasn't had a measurable impact on diners' consumptions. I don't know if anybody thought it would do, do they? Let's speak to Dr Ian Campbell, obesity expert. Good afternoon to you, Ian. Good afternoon. I mean, there's some great clinicians out there, there's psychologists, there's doctors, there's all sorts of people, but who would have thought that the greatest of them all was our former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, uh, who knows all about weight issues, apparently, and it's all down to a lack of spirituality. Yeah, I, I must admit I was a bit dismayed at the disrespect he showed to people who do have a weight problem and the actual ignorance about the real causes of overweight and obesity. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling, you know, wonderful, I'm sure there are some people who uh, go to church who might be overweight, might be underweight. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm a reasonably bright bloke, Ian, but I'm struggling with the correlation here. I, I see no direct correlation at all. In fact, if anything, he's got it around completely the wrong way. In days gone by, the only fatso in the village was the, usually the vicar, the most <laughs> pious person in the community, yeah, yeah. perhaps, but that was because he was relatively affluent and could afford to overeat. Yeah. Nowadays, the problem is not that people are irreligious or not pious. It's got nothing to do with it. The problem is that the food that we are served up generally is unhealthy, high fat, high sugar, and predominantly it's people who are struggling financially that tend to go for those foods because that's mm. all they can afford. That's what's being provided. Yeah. I, I did wonder when... when Wes Streeting was, was talking about, and he's kind of gone into the territory of um, other ways to address obesity other than just at the, the medical side, you know, lifestyle and things like that. So he's raised the issue. Uh, but I guess if a government was really serious, they would go round a supermarket and they would say, all that pro see all that ultra processed stuff, that's all going to go. It's going to be, be like selling Marlboro Lights to kids. We're going to. It's all going to go. You can't sell it. It's now illegal. Um, I mean, that would be. I'm sure there's economic considerations in doing that, but I mean, that would be the start, right? Well, yeah. So I, I first became involved in helping people with weight problems because of direct patient contact. Someone with a weight problem, I wanted to help. But very soon, I became aware that the real impact, the real solution to the problem is not on a one-to-one -one basis only it's what we do at us as a society and that does involve restricting the sale of unhealthy foods mm. it's also about promoting ways in which people can be more physically active almost without trying you know more public transport less reliance on the car more physical activity sports facilities all these things but yes some form of regulation to restrain the food industry who are completely taking over our yeah. food habits and controlling what we do and they do need to be constrained yeah i, I wonder why politicians of all sways don't don't really go there do they so, i mean they might ge sort of generalize and say you know it'd be great if you ate more fruit and vegetables but uh, and, and try and avoid you know too many uh, ready meals it's a sort of very general point I, i've not really heard any health secretary get really angry on this very point they have spoken about it over the years, uh, but I think it's such a big... The food lobby is so strong. I mean, True. every high street's got, got a, a supermarket, a very powerful financial institution that is controlling what we eat, making unhealthy foods very affordable, relatively speaking, so people are prone to do it. Yeah. And I remember when we were pushing the five a day, five portions of fruit and vegetable a day, coming across a kid in a supermarket who said to his mum, 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 I want more fruit because I've got to have my five a day. I thought the message is getting over. So yeah, yeah. if we are consistent with public health messages, they do have an impact, but equally we need to constrain those who are trying to do the absolute opposite and make us do unhealthy things. Yeah, what's the first step do you think i mean you deal with obesity this is your area when you look around you what what do we need to do more of is it do we need to eat less do we need just to eat different things 
Is it down? Yeah, because people always say, look, eat less, do some exercise. It's, no, it's not rocket science. It will work. But it clearly doesn't, because we all know that, right? Well, it does work. The only thing that does work is eating less and moving more. But the problem is all the forces around us are more powerful than natural ability. So, so we're weak, yes. aren't we, really, Ian? Well, we, we can control what we eat, we can control what we do, but unfortunately, if you're financially constrained, if you're living in an environment where public transport isn't available, where sports facilities are not there, or if you've got mental ill health and you, you struggle to motivate yourself, all these things need to be dealt with as well, which is why decades ago I was saying publicly, stop blaming the patient, let's look at societal trends and help people to change the way they live, because the long-term impact is only achievable if we have change as a whole society. Yeah, I mean, obviously there is a societal um, component to all of this, and it's huge, but there is also an individual one, right? Of course. We, we all have a choice, but what I'm saying is sometimes those choices are very hard to make. And if you're living on minimum wage, or living wage as we like to call it now, and you've got £10 to feed your family of five on a Friday night, you're going to go for the fast food that's available in the supermarket because it, it will fill your kids up, it yep. will make them happy, but it will fill them with fat and sugar. But you do it because financially you have no other choice. There it is. Ian, thank you, sir. Dr Ian Campbell, obesity expert on this issue.